Now, as promised, uh, uh, we stopped and uh, allowed that if people wanted to move on and do the supplemental slides, uh, those being slides 13, 14, and 15 in the uh, in the slide deck, uh, and we chose to do that. So I am now speaking to the supplemental slides, and following this one are slides on the Johari window, uh, which uh, gets us into discussion of knowing what we know, uh, knowing what we don't know, not knowing what we know, and not knowing what we don't know. Uh, so it's important that one be conscious of uh, of all four quadrants of the Johari window, and we'll talk about that in, in a little more detail shortly. Um, the next one is on what is the makeup of psychological harm by omission or commission. There are 23 factors which have been discussed under various labels, and 23 labels, I guess, is more accurate. Uh, in the child welfare sector, uh, generally speaking, um, marking different forms of psychological harm. And in the last one, we talk about Wolfensberger's work, uh, which I got from Darcy Elks, the road map to abuse and maltreatment up to and including uh, Wolfensberger's concept of death making, which includes, of course, really actually uh, causing somebody's death. So um, anyway, we're, uh, we're ready to go. So here it is. This is the Johari window. Now, um, the Johari window is made up of uh, four quadrants in a matrix formed by uh, two columns, known by self and unknown by self. So that's the factor. Is something known by me or unknown by me? And uh, to know that, of course, you just ask. Uh, the other is, uh, is this known by others or unknown by others? And, uh, uh, of course, if something is unknown by others, the act is to tell uh, those people. But here is, uh, here's how it works. If we know it and everyone else knows it, that's obviously an open and free area. We all celebrate that, and that is our, our shared knowledge. Really no issue with that. We want to make that area as big as we possibly can get it. And it certainly would not be, hopefully, a square, as is the case here, but, lar but a much larger rectangle than the others. Um, the next uh, um, quadrant is where we don't know something, but others do. So this area uh, can be subdivided, because we certainly are aware of some things that we don't know that others do know. And that's probably a healthy thing. Uh, we are also able to use techniques such as uh, solic soliciting feedback uh, from others or engaging in supervision and uh, uh, sort of ongoing um, knowledge translation and exchange activities where we are constantly confronted with the things that we don't know. And of course, we're engaged in learning to make that a smaller area. Uh, sorry, the things that we the things that we know that we don't know, uh, it's good that that's a healthy area, but we're obviously trying to shrink that down and put that information all into the we know it and everyone else knows it as well. So the learning, uh, uh, our own personal learning is directed in that uh, way. But there's also a blind area where we actually don't know something that's known by others, but, but we don't know it. And, uh, of course, we want to shrink that blind area. We don't want to have too many things where we, you know, willfully are blind to the fact that we don't know something. In the third quadrant, we have something that we know, but others do not know. And, of course, then the challenge is, are we going to teach? Are we going to disclose? Are we going to expose that knowledge that we have uh, to others? Um, so in places like copyright and uh, sort of new ideas that are going to be patented, uh, you will keep that secret from others until it's time to trot it out because now you have protection. But otherwise, in our business, we're mostly trying to make sure that what we know is available to others. And we uh, hope, I hope, that people will teach as well as uh, be prepared to learn. And the last uh, area is the not known by us and not known by others. 
So it's truly an unknown area. Now there's ways in which we can address some parts of this. So other people can make observations about things and although they don't know it, it seems to suggest that there's an area of lack of knowledge. Uh, people can make shared discoveries of things and that's where you know both of us, uh, both me and others uh, together find out things that we don't know. And of course, uh, if I pursue this on my own, uh, it's a matter of self-discovery. Similarly, if others do, it's self-discovery. And gradually, information makes it from the fourth quadrant over into either the second or the third quadrants. The real issue is, is the fourth quadrant of the fourth quadrant, the little piece at the bottom where nobody's aware uh, of information. So we don't know it, and we don't know that we don't know it. Others don't know it, and they don't know that they don't know it. So none of us know about something. That's an area perhaps for the spiritual folks, uh, you know, the, the, the great unknown. Um, even the fact that we can conceive of something such as this suggests that we're willing to, uh, we're willing to break that down, but there are some things we just can't even conceive of as at this time. So 23 labels for various forms of psychological harm by omission or commission. Exclusion, distantiation, marginalization. Uh, distantiation is a term you don't hear a lot. Uh, Darcy Elks used this term, uh, and I think, again, it, this may be a term that uh, Wolfensberger has used at some point. Um, it refers to the putting of psychological and physical distance between people, the us and the them. Um, so various things can actually produce a, a, a degree of distance psychologically, uh, such as labels. Uh, but also uh, characteristics that we attribute to people may act as well to put a form of psychological distance between us. Of course, there's also the obvious physical ones. We'll talk about that later. That's like exclusion and uh, congregation and uh, segregation and, and the like, ghettoizing and things of that nature. Labeling, dehumanizing, and objectification. So labeling, I think we probably don't need to explain a lot about. Dehumanizing, I don't think we need to explain a lot about. Objectification is the tendency to uh, feature or consider only certain aspects of a person, usually something related to uh, a, like a physical feature uh, or an observable feature of some form. And then we objectify them as related only to that one a bit of evidence of this type of behavior is when we begin to refer to patients, for example, by their disease. That is a form of objectification. Uh, denying, rejecting, minimizing, and trivializing. These are all ways in which we psychologically, again, um, by the way we respond to people, uh, we don't provide them with what they deserve. <clears throat> terrorizing, infantilizing, demonizing, and gaslighting. Terrorizing and infantilizing and demonizing, I think most people kind of get. Gaslighting comes from the uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie. I think it's called Gaslight, um, in which a, uh, an emotionally abusive partner, uh, through a variety of means, one of which is to vary the gas uh, flow uh, turning the lights up and down, um, that would be one of the techniques used. But essentially, the, the sought-for outcome was to cause the partner to question their own sanity. And, uh, of course, there's a lot of other sort of manipulations and uh, uh, conversations that, that cast doubt on the person's sanity. But... Gaslighting refers to the manipulation of both the environment and uh, uh, the thought patterns and so on of somebody um, to cause them to doubt their own sanity. Abusive expectations, chaotic responsiveness. Uh, abusive expectations refer to those expectations that, first of all, may not ever be possible by anyone to actually meet. 
uh, but they also might be abusive in that they change so just when somebody actually is able to finally meet the expectation then the expectation may change and uh, this is setting people up to fail for example uh, chaotic responsiveness is is it doesn't appear to have any rhyme or reason so sometimes uh, uh, you know a positive response to a behavior sometimes a punishment response sometimes a uh, non response or a neutral response and it doesn't appear to have any rhyme or reason and therefore it's chaotic and finally exploiting manipulating coercing dominating deceiving extorting and blackmailing these are all outright uh, manipulations of people um, by any and all means uh, and is uh, exploitation of power over somebody okay uh, last of the three slides uh, deals with the roadmap to abuse and maltreatment and once again I attribute this to Darcy Elks and uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of the information as well is influenced by Wolfensberger's writings. So uh, there are probably much finer distinctions than what I've provided here. I've, I've grouped several things under the first category where it, it requires essentially for, for people to move on along the roadmap to abuse or maltreatment, uh, one has to have all three of these happening, that a difference is perceived that difference is perceived as significant and that significant difference is also perceived and valued negatively so it's it's not necessarily a problem that there be perceived differences it's not necessarily a problem that those differences might even be significant but when we begin to value them negatively we are on the road map we're on the road to to abuse and maltreatment um, the next phase of this that intensifies things is that we begin to heap other negative associations which are essentially unrelated to the perceived significant difference that's now valued negatively but we use things like stereotyping and symbolism as well as kind of historical ways in which people have been imaged and um, portrayed um, we, we add these additional associations that actually are not called for by any kind of factual or real uh, circumstance but we begin to add them nonetheless so beginning to see people with disabilities as menaces as sick as uh, some form I guess of burden uh, or of um, a burden of charity uh, sort of the automatic thought that a person with a disability is also one of those other things uh, may in fact not be in any way near to the truth but they get added on so it's like piling on in uh, football there's a penalty for that but there isn't one for it for this uh, the next stage is exclusion uh, and in this case we're talking about the concept of distantiation that I mentioned earlier uh, people may be excluded uh, by being shunned but they also may be packed up and sent somewhere and if we can't uh, avoid them uh, we see that we can avoid them by uh, taking them somewhere or placing them somewhere where they can't interact with us and congregation and segregation the most extreme of which of course are things like concentration camps uh, refugee camps and the like uh, the next stage is uh, neglect and this is essentially out of sight out of mind um, the the findings of um, pictorial essay called Christmas in Purgatory uh, for example which is an American publication uh, a group of photographs of people in clear neglect situations uh, while living in the care of the state uh, followed as well in the uh, in 1969 by uh, Geraldo Rivera uh, doing an expose on a New York institution and also exposing the neglect uh, to whom people with disabilities were being subject um, and finally if that's not bad enough we move to the last stage which includes forms of abuse and ultimately uh, at its most extreme the causing of the death of people whether by passive euthanasia uh, active euthanasia or in fact outright killing 
and that includes uh, you know murder suicides uh, as well but it, it ultimately is uh, is um, most in its most uh, malignant form seen in the killing of thousands of disabled people uh, under Hitler's uh, Nazi regime which was the prelude to the uh, the technology used later against the Jews and Poles and others um, but essentially uh, beginning with the destruction of uh, people with disabilities uh, under the guise that it was um, a an act of mercy uh, at first and then I don't think they tried to continue that facade for very long and after a while I think they just got on with it Anyway, um, that's it for the three supplemental slides then. Now we can move on to discussion and examples from the audience. You know, real ethical dilemmas that people are having and I welcome all forms of discussion and uh, one needn't name names or identify people uh, to be able to have this discussion. So please uh, feel